Hi guys and welcome back to another video. So some of you mentioned that you'd like to see radios which would not normally feature in a video due to it not working as expected. Now this radio, the Baofeng UVK61, works well in some areas but not so well in others. In this video we'll go through them. So firstly you get the usual peripherals that you would expect with a handheld radio. You get the manual, the radio itself, a battery, an antenna, a desktop charger and a belt clip and wrist strap. Now the desktop charger is mains powered. The battery is a light iron with a 2600 milliamp hour capacity. Now even though you do get a desktop charger, the battery does have a USB-C port located on the lower rear. And yep, this is used to charge the battery if you do not want to use the desktop charger. The included antenna is rather stiff, as you can see from my special technique stiffness test. And according to the little inlay in the base, it supports FM broadcasts 136 to 174 megahertz and then 400 to 520 megahertz. Layout wise, it's not a bad looking radio. And at first glance, you'd think that this radio is a Quangshan K6 because of how it looks. In fact, it appears to me that Baofeng, or whoever made this radio, is trying to imitate the Quangshan radio, even with its model name. Maybe trying to dupe suspecting buyers into thinking that they're getting a Quangshan K5 or K6, considering its popularity with the hardware modders that we've seen recently. Now, the serial number sticker on the rear states that this is pretty much a tri-band radio. Well, at least for those countries that support the 1.25 metre ham radio band. Now, down the left side, we have the PTT, two programmable function buttons. And then down the right side, we have a lower flap, which has nothing behind it. And that kind of makes me wonder if there should have been a USB-C port there. But just above it, we have the usual Kenwood style speaker mic connection, which is also used to program the radio using your computer. On the top of the radio, you have the usual LED light, an on and off switch with volume, and of course, an antenna connection. The radio is supposed to support dual watch, so you have two frequencies or VFOs shown on the screen at the same time. Now, as we go through the menu, there's nothing really that interesting to see, but it does have the usual settings and features that we find on these types of radios. However, I must say I do actually like the display, the cool blue backlight and the text on the screen, like the font, for example, I find it to be very readable. And in fact, in the menu, you can actually reverse the screen as well, but it doesn't look as good as this cool blue look. Receiving ham radio broadcast doesn't sound too bad either, at least with my all-star node connected to Hubnet and listening to some QSOs going on. And the transmitted audio, well, that sounds a bit like this. This is uh, M0DQW just testing the audio on the Baofeng at UV K61. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Uh, M0DQW testing the audio quality on the Baofeng UV K61 handheld transceiver. Over. Now, as mentioned earlier, computer programming is available using a programming cable connected to the radio. And mine didn't come with a cable, but they're relatively cheap anyway. Chirp unfortunately doesn't support this model of radio just yet, but the Baofeng K6 software appears to work just fine. Now with the software, you can program all of the radio's features and functions, and of course, add memories like your local repeaters. So where does this radio fail? Well, take a listen to this for starters. <laughs> Now that was receiving the airband, and apparently it should have been AM. Strong signals get far too overloaded and, well, just sound trash. Now let's just move on to the RF power output. On 2 meters at 145 megahertz, we see an output of 5 watts. Now that's pretty perfect, as that's what I was expecting. If we move up to the 70 centimeter band at around 435 megahertz, 
we see an output of just under 4 watts. Now that's a little less than advertised, but not unexpected. We also see the same power output of just under 4 watts on the 1.25 meter band at 220 megahertz. And as a bonus test at 444 megahertz, we see an output of just under 4 watts also. But remember, using this radio on the PMR band would actually be illegal here in the UK. OK, with the power test out of the way, let's now test the spurious emissions. Now I'm using a Tiny SA Ultra, and while I know this is not a lab grade spectrum analyzer, it still gives a good enough result to base our judgment of how clean a transmitter is. Now, as you can see here, the second harmonic when transmitting on 145 megahertz is only around 18 dBm lower than that fundamental. Now, I'm pretty sure that in most countries that just would not be acceptable. However, on the 1.25 meter band at 220 megahertz, we actually see a surprising minus 53 dBm on that second harmonic compared to the fundamental. And I pretty much think that that is actually acceptable to be used on air. Now up on the 70 centimeter band around 430 megahertz, things continue to surprise me. We literally have no measurable second harmonic. And this pretty much shows that this radio has really been designed to be used with UHF frequencies. Now we see this so many times when it comes to handheld radios coming out of China, and it's my only assumption is that they design these radios to be used on a certain band in regards to filters which filter out those spurs. But they just then advertise the radio as multiband just because it can technically do it. What I find interesting though is videos like this one that I've made highlights the issues with these cheap radios coming out of China. But if these manufacturers of these radios were actually to make a radio where the air band sounded good and that all supported bands were filtered correctly, they would sell way more radios because they'd be competing with top tier brands that cost 10 to 20 times more. So it's kind of strange that they seem to go down this route. However, there is one company that really does make great radios and that's TID Radio. All of the radios that I've tested of theirs have always worked as intended, even with clean transmissions. So not all Chinese based manufacturers do these same practices as like this Beifeng radio. Now China has a lot of radio items that gets cloned and sold cheaper to the market. So do you think that this K61 is a clone or do you think this is actually a Beifeng radio? That's just shite. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll be very interested to read them. And I'm sure some of you will have your own opinions. Until the next video, take care. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one, which hopefully will be a bit more interesting than this product.